Uh, you use your bonnet as a mask instead of a real mask. Hmm? You use your bonnet as a mask. Because it does it all. Well, they can't see through the bonnet, man. I got a bonnet. You can. Yeah, my one of my bonnets is a little. Oh, how long you been growing your hair, Pat? Like ten years now. About. I need some. My brother's hair is like long, like long as yours. Something like that. Does he wear a bonnet? I got on a wig. Bonnet. It's a wig, Lance. Kev, you gotta unmute yourself on one of them. I muted you because it was coming through on both devices. You know how you do the the one device? It was coming through. Can you through hear me now? Device. I can hear you now. Yeah, you're unmuted now. You good? Okay. What if what if Kev was like cursing and that's why he, he muted his thing? He didn't want to say Shoot me a text if you need me. I cuss, man. I've been telling people. I know you do cuss. Uh, I heard you one time and I was like, oh my gosh, the world is ending. <laughs> Kev, run it through the Run it through the other one because you sound far away on this one. What? I sound far away? Yeah. Uh, it's weird. Oh, Timmy, it's weird. You said it sounds weird? Yeah, yeah, so you got two devices uh up. Try to unmute the other one and mute the one that we that Hello? you currently. Yeah, that sounds better. Okay. Now mute the other one. I'll mute the other one. I'll mute the other one. Hold on, hold on. I'll, I'll, I'll Cam! Now say something else, Kev. Nope, muted all of it. Right. Hello. That's perfect. That's perfect. Whatever you do, just don't do nothing else. But it keeps putting my name keeps going. Do you see uh Mrs. Kev on stage? No, no. Does it you on your that. screen is it recording fine? Yeah, it's recording fine. It just says Kev is talking, but that's not gonna show up in the in the final thing. Are you sure? Yes. Yes, yes Kevin. Yes. Come all right, man. Jesus, if you say it works, it works. It was like dealing with Black Ron on uh, Zoom with the homies. Do you, do you, do you text 15 minutes early, Kevin? You and your servant and your servant crew that you have. Her, people, early. Everybody who works for me gets paid. They are okay, paid employees. Get paid. No, I think that's the whole thing with servants. No, servants get paid. Servants get paid. They? They're not enslaved. Butlers? You think butlers are there against their will? Right. <laughs> They're just employees. Don't say servants. Hey, hey this, 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 this how narratives start, Kev. It is, and I listen Kevin enough. Hire servants, y'all. Enough of the narratives. Let's just enough. Let's just <laughs> listen. Let's Kev just keep it said, basketball. He just he like just just enough. Just enough. He makes all his crew have cloths over their arms, and he's like, "Hey, you, you can." You, That's really you why it was muted. Podcast? He, was, he was muting it. It was muted because he was like, "Servants, <laughs> fix my stuff," and he didn't want us to know. That's what he was calling them. And all you need is five people to say the same story, and then boom, you yeah, don't even need five. Just one no, person. Even, yeah. just need what we enough. have right here. <laughs> We've started and plenty and there. Servants. <laughs> The whole black Pat doesn't like black women. People were like taking it seriously. Like, okay, we got to stop making that joke because the people were like, yeah, the, his friends say he don't like black women. We're like, hey, we was playing though. <laughs> well, it didn't help that you guys used pictures of my old friends and it was all white people and I didn't even know those people. Yeah, you Brock and Rob. Narrative. You put that narrative on me. You're like, look at you and all your friends. I was like, I knew two <laughs> people in that. <laughs> I was caught up in a blizzard. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I might as well tell you guys first because you're gonna hear it before everybody else because I haven't made the video. Zooming with the homies is coming to an end. <gasps> Overall end? Oh, Kev, okay, you didn't know? No, I thought he was cutting down to one day a week. Hey, let me tell you. Hey, to you told the, your advertisers? I haven't told them yet. I gotta send an email. Oh, oh. You, listen, right, you, also they, they will try to bully you into staying. But when them companies cancel their ads, they be like, yeah, you just we, we don't have the budget. So nah, that goes yeah. both ways. That's exactly. hilarious. They'd be like, oh, by the way, uh, June through January is canceled. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's June now. And you have no say so. So I feel <laughs> no. like it's like putting your two weeks in versus quitting. Y'all fire me today, and then I can quit today. Yeah, I'm out. What bro. made you decide to stop it overall to here? Nigga, nigga, our conversation. <laughs> mm. Which was? That's why I, I just told to hear he's doing too much, bro. I'm told to hear to get some servants. To hear missed a flight. He missed a what he missed a lobby call. He um he been tripping, bro. Doing what? Zooming? Just sleep, no, nah, sleep deprived. Just I'm just sleep deprived. No, no, no. Try it. Go for it, man. I think you could do it. 
<laughs> don't bail. Depravity. Yeah. Depravity. Yeah. Like depravity. Deprived. I think it hit the I sleepy. I sleep. <laughs> hey, we just had a great breakfast, bro. And you gonna do that to your boy, man? Sleep the privet. You, you you hit it so hard and then stop. And I hit a hard <laughs> right. I was like, <laughs> Pat, he he hit the eject button when the plane was taking off. Like you didn't even try to fly yet. He was like, there's no take off. Nope. I'm out. <laughs> I I he said he missed the flight. I'm out. I said. He missed a flight. He missed a lobby call. He missed one meal. You can do zooming. Now I told you here. I was like, bro, zooming was dope, but it was a it was a pandemic creation because mm -hmm. you weren't doing anything else. Right. Now you have your regular schedule, and you probably are busier now than you were before the pandemic. Right. So it doesn't make sense to continue something that was for the pandemic, especially on travel days. You were doing them on travel days, bro. Pat, he was leaving shoots. We were already there 10 hours, 6, 6 a.m. call time. He'd be the first one to leave so that he could, I mean, I'm talking about leaving at five versus six or 6.30 to get back to the house and then go live for two more, two hours, two and a half hours. That's, that's, that's. And listen, I know the more mob is great, but the, the money, it ain't, it ain't your health money. Yeah, that was another thing. The money, the last couple of weeks, I probably made like $10 one night, $14 the other night. And it's not about the money, but like getting paid for your time and your energy definitely helps quantify why you're giving up your time and your energy. I haven't had like a dinner with Farron on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday in over a year because oh, wow. I've had Zooming. So now That's I get my crazy. evenings back with the family and I'm only going to be in town Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesdays anyway because we leave a lot of time on Thursday. And that's if, you, if you're in town on Wednesday. If I'm in town on Wednesday, so I was really yeah. in this Wednesday at nine. That's true. And and it's it's us, bro. You can say us about the money. It's just us, right? Well, it's not. Well, just, just us on this Zoom. It ain't people are gonna watch it later. <laughs> yeah, it's a, that's the whole. Point. Oh, I, I thought I thought we was editing this stuff up. I thought... No, no, no. No, the camera's not... rolling. Once yeah. everybody's on screen, the camera starts. The camera was rolling when Kev couldn't hear us. The camera was rolling. We got all. Hey, bro. Hey, look. You know, look, man. I'm so happy. I had a joke, and I stopped myself from saying it because I seen Weir's recording, and I'm glad I stopped myself. It was a great joke, but boy, I'm glad I stopped myself. You would have been, been canceled. all liability. You text it to me when I read it. I laugh loud, so it was like you told it in time. Whew. <laughs> to hear. Listen, it was stellar. I'm I'm excited about it, but I'm doing the timing of it made it impeccable. You're really oh, proud of this joke. Uh, he really is. <laughs> You're trying to sell us. <laughs> yeah. So when's the last day to hear? Well, that's what I'm saying. I, I'm gonna do a finale, but I'm trying to decide if I want to do the finale in person, like at Tone Studio again, or if I just want to do it online and then I can have people cycle in or cycle out. But it's it's gonna be behind a paywall. I ain't gonna even hold y'all. Uh, I'm deciding between five and ten dollars. If I do it. Um, at, at Tone's place, and we can find a way to put the people on the on the screen. It'd probably be ten and, and ten and twenty. If I do it just on regular stream yard, it's just going to be a ten dollar paywall for the last episode. That that's when dope because it? it's not about the money. Hey, um, <laughs> zooming with the homies is one of the greatest inventions in that time and let me say this like when uh when cat shouted all y'all out and you know what i mean everybody felt like the proudness of it but it's like what what y'all done overall and this is all y'all because this is all all, all dev digital associated but how y'all responded in the pandemic from zooming with the homies to keep your distance was phenomenal thanks lance woods Thank you, bro. Yes, thank you. Yeah. You were a part of that too. And Lance Woods is way funnier than he used to be. No disrespect. I mean, like, full compliment. This man is a monster on stage. Oh, thank you, Kevin, on the stage. And he gives you some monstrous tags too, Lance. Oh, Lance, your tag for my one joke. I don't want to spill it in case anybody comes to the show. Ah, <laughs> it's a perfect button. Your tag was so good. I ended. I I stopped saying my last part because I was doing your tag and then my part. And the drop off was tremendous. I was like, we just ended with my last <laughs> Yes, I'm so excited for you to see our sets. You know, when you get a set together and you're so proud of it, you want your friends to see you. Always want your friends to see you, but like this set that I'm doing right here is so authentic to me. 
and my family and just everything we went through. And I, I, I said I wasn't going to do any pandemic jokes because I didn't want it to be irrelevant next year. But these jokes are so good, like I could use them anytime, bro. Yeah, and pandemic stuff is always going to be relevant because we live through it. That's true. You know, you know what's funny is go back and watch comedy. And y'all, y'all remember the recession? And what was that about four or five, six mm. years ago? Uh, 2008. Lost 2008, right? Yeah, I was like, like yeah, I, you know, because I and I, I don't remember because my money been pretty the same the whole time. Your so money been like, recessed? Yeah, it's like, <laughs> oh, it's a recession. All right, cool. Well, Domino's is still on the way. But you go back and watch jokes from like Def Comedy Jam, they're talking about a recession. Right. Yeah, I, I actually like the, I like art reflecting life as it was at the moment. Mm-hmm. Like when you listen to Jay-Z, he's like, I'm planking on a million. Like you, you, we remember when planking was a thing. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I like stand up being, you know, relevant to the time. Of course you, we all want to have some jokes that are like evergreen in every, in every special, but but you, you're a good comedian should be talking about what his life is, his or her life is right now. Yeah. How old is stand up? Like, was there stand up when the Black Plague was going on? I don't think it was in its traditional, in its current form, but I think somebody being funny in public has existed in some way, shape, or form. Like how uh, philosophers, like the court jester. Oh, is that what you're saying, man? Court jester? Yeah, I said court jester, you copycat. Uh. <laughs> They're like the Black Plague, right? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if Black people were like, see, y'all going to throw this on us, too. We could have been any plague. But y'all going to throw Black on it. It's really a rat plague, but y'all going to put Black on black, see? black Plagues matter. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> the rats were right there. Y'all could have called it that. They didn't want to go bubonic plague. plague, but no. You know, you know, the honesty about a special is, as much as we want to act like comedy is such a deep thing, most specials come down to like five minutes of something you remember. There's obviously specials that stand out as that, but most specials you remember That's a bit a or two. That's a fantastic point. I've never thought about it like that. Even your favorites, it'll be Even like- Even your favorites. Wonderful. You know, like some of my favorite yeah. Chappelle uh sets you you remember like the dude jacking off on the the, the subway that was one special the yeah. baby on the corner that was a totally different special hey, like baby. i'm selling crap <laughs> <laughs> i rolled yeah. down the window on the limousine it's like nigga, how old was this limousine <laughs> that was such a good joke it was so long too it was like 10 minutes yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. A long bit i'm trying to one of my jokes is getting very long too because everybody that hears it every comic that hears it gives me 15 tags for it so I'm hoping that it's going to be one of those type of, I've always wanted to have one bit that I can stay in for like 10 minutes. And I feel like this might be the beginning of that bit. Who's that comedian you share with me to hear? He had the, the bass joke. Oh, JJ, uh, JJ Williamson, JJ from the city. Oh set. man. Bam, he could have did that joke for yeah. an hour and a half. And I would have been like, every time you start, it's funny all over again. Pat, JJ is incredible. I got to show you that joke when we finish Pat. That shit is so fucking just man. And that's the thing. I was talking to somebody about this the other day. It's like <clears throat> a lot of comics put so much weight on being the best and the greatest and having the most in-depth joke and it being so cerebral that I feel like they get away from like just making people laugh and having fun on stage. Memorable. Bro, this Bruh. is what I'm doing right now. <clears throat> it's all about being funny and having fun. I have the most act outs in any set that I've ever had in my life. Like this, this set. You got like, killed on the act outs. When I first started watching you, you had a bunch of act outs. Mm-hmm. Listen, yeah, man, I, I'm I with you to hear. In the Hollywood talk, oh, bro, that's, that's low hanging fruit. You gotta do, you gotta dig deeper, man. You left a lot of meat on the bone. Nigga, shut up. I'm having a good time. The crowd is bugging up. Let me tell you what I focus on. I appreciate comedians enjoying my set. But at the end of the day, it's the audience who needs to have a good time. Right. Comedians who think your joke is funny won't laugh. And no, they don't they'll, buy they'll, the tickets. They'll, they'll steal your joke, okay? Right. <laughs> so I've been like, bro, I don't care. If I think it's funny, if the audience thinks it's funny, 
I, I, I don't care if a whole bunch of comedians think he went this far and comedy folks, uh, man, nah. The people hey, you know who pay crazy? 30, if they like it, I love it. I heard people like, uh, I mean, this goes for everything, but I guess specifically for this, like a stand-up comedian can watch your joke, think it's perfect, but still try to be like, downplay it and give you a little bit of like extra just so that they can say that they helped with that, you know? Even oh, yeah. if they think that the joke is perfect. And I feel like it's it's kind of like that with any with any uh, art form, but they'll like lower it so that they can add something, even if it's not necessary. Bro, yeah. stand-up is a, when you have friends in stand-up, it's a more collaborative uh, art form than, yeah. than when you don't like. Nate and Lance tagged my jokes up. Nat was, uh, Lance was only in the uh, Tacoma for one show. And he gave me a tag that I'm keeping for the rest of the tour. Nate gave me a tag that might be the best part of the joke. All right, that's a good place for us to jump into the first topic of today. We'll be right back after this. That's right. Father's Day is just around the corner, and you probably need a gift for your hairy dad. Make your pops proud this year and get him and yourself a Manscaped Lawnmower 4.0. That's right. You, you. you heard that right. The Lawnmower 4.0. Get 20% off and free shipping. Just use the code squad, S-Q-U-A-D-D at manscaped.com. Now, my pops is a little bald up here, but he's graying everywhere, and I do mean everywhere. So I'm getting him that lawnmower 4.0 so he can trim it down. Manscaped is the only men's brand dedicated to below-the-waist grooming, and they just launched the lawnmower 4.0. Just imagine surprising your dad with this sleek, well-designed, optimized body hair trimmer that says your balls will thank you on the box. Their fourth generation trimmer features a cutting edge blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. You might ask, how is the Lawnmower 4.0 different from other trimmers? Well, this upgraded trimmer includes a multi-function on and off switch that can engage a travel lock. This is an amazing feature if your father or yourself do a lot of traveling. It also gives you the ability to turn on the 4000K LED light on and off whenever you need to, just in case you need that precise shave or you plan on shaving your balls in the dark. The Lawnmower 4.0 even lets you customize your trim with additional guard lengths with sizes one through four. And they now have a new wireless charge system that uses electromagnetic induction to help increase battery length for a longer battery life. You're dead right. Wireless ball trimmers are a thing now. Have you ever seen a nose bush sticking out of your father's nose? Well, the Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Trimmer, take care of that. It's the best nose and hair trimmer, and it'll be the best gift for your pops. They also have other amazing gifts like cologne, the Crop Mop, Ball Wipes, Crop Reviver, Ball Turner, and Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant. For all the ladies listening, you'll appreciate this part. Manscaped products are cruelty-free, paraben-free, dye-free, and vegan. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code SQUAD, S-Q-U-A-D-D, at manscaped.com. So get your dad a gift that you know they will use. So remember, that's 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com. Just use the promo code SQUAD, S-Q-U-A-D-D. So this year, show your original home some love. From Manscaped. First topic of today, we have: Would you rather swim with sharks or work with lions? Work I'm gonna tell lions. you why the answer is work with lions. Immediately, no debate. If you're working with lions, just the lion is trying to kill you. If you're swimming with sharks, they're trying to kill you, and the ocean is trying to kill you. It's mm-hmm. two v one. Just give me the lion straight up Ooh. on ground. Well, I don't want to have to swim me. and fight. Well, there's other things like if the sharks are there, well, you'll be fine. Hilarious. (laughs) That was so. Hold on your big stomach. (laughs) Stay alive in the ocean. All the sharks do this to (laughs) Kev. Kev's like, no, I don't know you. (laughs) I respect you. You put hammer here, right? Hammer here. I low key considered doing the, you know, the cage thing where you go in there and the sharks go. I considered doing it in Hawaii, but I. What made you consider it? Because I was like, I'm in a cage. I'm I'm definitely doing. I go to Hawaii first week of July, and I'm definitely doing the 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 sharks. First of all, to hear you smell like bacon, don't do it. (laughs) (laughs) 
why you over there laughing, Kev? You smell like swine as well. Don't do it. Underwater though, they don't know yes. what pigs are. Yes. <laughs> I don't know what this wild boars, the wild uh, boars that be in the water. It's, it's some pig, uh, wild boars that be in water too. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine people throwing to here out for chum to attract sharks. <laughs> We're just putting a couple to here's out in the water. <laughs> That's the same thing. Uh, uh, they, they throw your locks in the crowd, but like, let me get the center Patrick in here. <laughs> <laughs> They be tricking you know Pat, like, a trail of chocolate covered almonds. That's how they trick them back to his house. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's crazy about those shark dives, those cages? Like, it's funny because like the shark attacking me is only like one of like 10 things that I'm scared of, which is why I never really got the shark cage thing. Cause it's like you're 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 down there and the, the cage is keeping the shark from biting you, but that's it. So, you know? What do you mean? What is scary? You're you're still underwater. If the cage falls, you're just Can in you a cage. Swim? You don't falls. know how to swim. Oh yeah. In a I cage. I actually never thought about that. I'm saying you never seen 47 meters like down. It's not gonna fall the way it's it's like hinged. And you never it, seen it 47 falls. meters down. Patrick, first of all, it, I get it that you're frail and you are afraid of the water, but it's that's frail. Like your worries. You got on a whole pack with air. You think your shoulders are big enough to bend the iron? Absolutely. And, and swim out. Absolutely. What does being frail have to do with being in a cage underwater? Meg, that it's Meg just has to go like this, and her body will go through. The <laughs> sharks don't swim up to the cage. They're like, mm, nah. No, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> the answer is clearly work with lions. But who 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 is objecting to that? When you say swim with sharks, do you mean in a cage? Nah, free fall. Um, yeah, sure. Let's for simplicity. Let's just go with the cage. Well, no, then that would mean there's a cage on with the lions too, and that's way easier. Well, I mean, I mean, not not necessarily in with the lions. You're usually inside of a cage. You're usually inside of a, a like a closed-in area that so the lions can't get other people that are walking by while you're working with them. You're still encapsulated for the most part. You just with the sharks, the cage is a barrier of protection for you. With lions, the, the barrier of protection is for like people that the passerbyers and stuff like that. that Even when you hear is explaining something, he sounds like he's lying. Right. That, that <laughs> I, <didn't> make <laughs> I feel like I'm the only way I would ever consider swimming with sharks is if it was in an aquarium, not the open ocean. Like that, that is, and that's still a very. You need the sharks to be docile? Oh, yeah, nurse sharks. Every every time every time I don't know really what that is, but in every comment section, it's like, don't worry, that's a nurse shark, and that doesn't really matter. No. To they will still no. probably eat you. They are not threatened by you. The the only sharks I would consider swimming with is the San Jose Sharks, but I think hockey players are racist. Oh, um, <laughs> and then when see with the Lions, if if I'm on land, I always feel like I got a chance. I feel like I can run. I can't outrun a lion, but I feel like I can in my head. You cannot. You cannot. I can, I can punch. Because I knew a lot of people was. I figured. I just you guys were gonna say something like, you know, on the water you can't swim, but in the in the cage with a lion you could just get away. If you're working on a lion, you get away. Like, bro, you cannot outrun no lion, bro. No. But at least you can feel like you have I, a chance. Sometimes in life, all you need is the audacity of hope. I know I can't outrun that's a lion. It. The audacity. But I definitely can't outrun the, the shark. Yes, you can, Will. The faith of a mustard seed. Mm, mustard. What about that? Where's your faith there, to hear? Mustard by itself was a mm. <laughs> Y'all been seeing the uh, people put mustard on watermelons on TikTok? Yeah. yeah I'm about to try it. That I want to try it. Melissa want to try it, too. Why? Really? I saw Lizzo, uh, yep. Lizzo did it, and then it became a bigger thing. Mm. Uh, she was like, you know, that, that's this. the problem. You don't, you don't eat anything that Lizzo's eating. <laughs> oh, come on. Don't do that's that. That's unfair. Because that's actually. What is that? This is really a thing. Who puts mustard on what? It's watermelon. Oh, no, it just. She saw, she saw it first. She saw it and then she tried to do it. So. Yeah. Try it. You There's don't know. No way that's good. Until you try it, okay? Don't knock but, it till you try it. No, I knock all kind of things I haven't tried. Have you tried crack cocaine? Yeah, hmm? I knock it. I knock it. <laughs> Great high. Okay. Only thing that, that, that slows me down from working with lions is now I think about it. I remember watching Tiger King during the pandemic and I remember the one. 
Oh, but what was the one who was oh, like man. this? I forgot about that. That girl. But then they came back to work like three days later, but they was just still trying to feed lions with this on. Hey, man. That's I the... forgot her name. <laughs> that's <I> mean... it. <laughs> <laughs> Tiger King was such a big thing. You know they're working on a TV show? I mean, uh, yeah. I think they announced a cast for either a TV show or a movie for the... He's in prison. No, he's, he's not, not in it. It's somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you remember when he had a car outside of the prison waiting for Trump to pardon him? Oh, uh, <laughs> duh. It didn't happen. So the driver was like, so do I get paid? <laughs> <laughs> That's so embarrassing. Bruh, he was probably like talking to about that. Jail that Trump's time. out of office. Oh, my bad, Pat. No, I was just, go ahead. Once you're out of office, this it. Like you just in jail now. It's, it's like, all right, Trump's out. Well, yeah, you didn't dude. get my stuff. Nah, yeah, nah. Yeah, hair and makeup nah. on on top <laughs> of you know, standby too. Like he was oh. gonna get out and do an interview. Oh, <laughs> that sucks. He was probably talking so much shit in there. Like, fuck yeah. you, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, the Aryan Nation. Yeah. <laughs> Crips, bloods, <blah. laughs> they they denied that offer. <laughs> he was just like, so everything I said yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I Yo, am so respectful, y'all. <laughs> what what if Lil Wayne was his cellmate? Who? Lil Wayne. <laughs> he just because you know Lil Wayne oh, got yeah, the part. What if Lil Wayne got part? And they was in there like we both getting out tomorrow. Yeah. Why, why was why was Lil Wayne on Trump's immediate list? That's so random. Cause uh, a celebrity is for random. Trump is always good. Yeah, he got all ASAP Rocky too. Remember? Yeah, he did. I, he I did heard. I heard Trump. He sure. Did. I heard Trump really fuck with the Carter Three. <laughs> Pat, you got a something got on your screen. Oh, it's because black it's, yeah, it's the lights. It's the light oh, went out. Enough. So you see the shadows behind the other lights. It's like ghosts. Oh. <clears throat> now it's all smudged. Yeah, now you got mm. All right, well, let's put it to a vote, man. Sharks or lions? What are we working with? Lions. Uh, lions. It will never not be sharks. Lions. Any li Detroit lion, any lions, but not... No sharks. Meg, what you going with? Was that a Lion King shirt? Yeah. Lion. I saw a funny meme that really broke down Lion King in a way I've never seen. It was just like, Simba was like, man, my uncle killed my father and now he's after me. And Timon and Pumbaa were like, oh, have you tried not fucking worrying about it? <laughs> I was like, Kuda Matata was the worst advice for what he was going through. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, I never really thought about it. Like, that's for like, oh man, I missed the bus or I didn't yeah. get lunch. Like, not my dad was murdered. You, you gotta oh, work through uncle. that part a lot. You gotta train. Right. That's like, yeah, just stop fucking worrying about it. <laughs> <laughs> just eat some bugs and chill, bro. <laughs> get over it. Niggas die every day, B. You be all right. You tough, right? Right. <laughs> you tough, right? You a lion, right? But I'm going to go with lions who look like the, the lions are unanimous with this. Uh, we're going to jump right into the second topic right after this. What up, y'all? Sometimes I'm searching online, man, and I just don't want people in my business. I know what some of y'all are thinking. Well, why don't you just go into incognito mode? Let me tell you something, man. Incognito mode does not hide your activity. That's right. It doesn't matter what mode you're in or how often you clear your history. It does not hide it. That's right, man. Your internet service provider can see every single site you visited. That's wild, right? That's why even when I'm at home, I never go online without using ExpressVPN. It doesn't matter if you get your internet from Verizon, Comcast, or AT&T. ISPs in the U.S. can legally sell your information to ad companies. ExpressVPN is an app that reroutes your internet connection through their secure servers. So your ISP can't see the sites you visit. ExpressVPN also keeps your information secure by encrypting 100% of your data with the most powerful encryption available. I'm gonna be real with y'all, man. Most of the time, I don't even realize I have ExpressVPN on. 
It runs seamlessly in the background and it's so easy to use. All you have to do is tap one button and you're protected. ExpressVPN is available on all your devices, your, your phones, your smart TVs, your computers. So there's no excuse for you not to be using it. So protect your online activity today with the VPN rated number one by CNET and Wired. Visit with the exclusive link expressvpn.com slash squad. And you can get an extra three months free on a one-year package. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash squad. S-Q-U-A-D-D. ExpressVPN.com slash squad to learn more. I'm right. back. Come back. Let's All just right. jump out of the tool when Pat gets back. All right, now it's good. There time. we go. Andrew Tampon later. Wow. Second topic of the day we have, which is better, dressing with gravy versus dressing with cranberry sauce? No, no. say how you said before with the S, dressings. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Why don't I tell them, I want some dressings. I don't know what you're talking about, man. You do know. You wrote an S on me and don't lie. Don't lie to the people. Say it again. Dressing with gravy and dressing with what? Cranberry sauce. Who the fuck gets dressed and then puts on gravy? Oh, God. (laughs) Really? Really, Lance? Jesus Christ. (laughs) Yo. Y'all remember when that lady, the video that lady when Steve Harvey kept talking, she was like, Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen that point of view before. Someone who hates Steve Harvey. <laughs> it was a girl's mom and she was just, bro, she was tired of hearing about the story. So he said, this is for, this is the music y'all mama was making. She was like, oh. Was it this, weekend, this weekend in Lexington at the second show, it was this drunk party of women, right? And they kept screaming. They were screaming out a little bit while I was performing. But when Kev went up, they was just, yeah. Hey. And then, then what? They kept doing it to the point. Kev was and then like, what? Oh. He sat at those stage. He's like, oh. <laughs> the thing about being drunk. <laughs> and then what for a joke? Having as much fun as you are. <laughs> And then That's what? the problem, That's... bro. Nobody's having the fun. First, you, I'm going to stack you guys my are all dough. <laughs> yeah. You're just annoying everybody around you. <laughs> and they don't know. That's the worst part. Yeah, they're just, they're just laughing like, <laughs> and everybody's just like, you're ruining our time. <laughs> oh, man. Yo, Kev, Kev how, how do you deal with hecklers? John you know, I've been thinking about that. I was like, do I want people thrown out? Because the club usually waits for you to be like, all right, get them out of here. Right. And I'm not ever trying to throw out no fans. But to me, it's like, if you're ruining everybody else's experience, or like I'm not able to perform like I normally do, I'd be like, all right, come on now. It ain't just, you know, luckily with my audience, I don't have a lot of hecklers who are like, you ain't funny, you ain't this. Like people mostly come for a good time. It's almost always a drunk person who doesn't realize they're drunk. And they're just talking back to you like it's just you and them in the audience. So when I draw attention to it, usually their friends are like, all right, girl, just hush. But now I'm like, I talk to you twice. I'm gonna be like, all right, man, throw him out. Just because I want the power. <laughs> y'all see, out. y'all see DC hey, knock somebody out. <laughs> yeah. Who? DC, DC. knock somebody out. Who? who was oh yeah. Him. Woo! He, he gave. It. They say, they say, dude ran up on stage. Woo, that, that was, that's crazy you, to be slept in a comedy club. Right. Yeah, man. That's wild. <laughs> And he kept going. Well, like That's DC cool. said in the caption, like, bro, if you on that energy, just don't come. Don't, yeah. you don't. Cause he said he wasn't even roasting him. He was just doing his set. It's a comedy club. Like, that's so wild to be like, everybody's laughing at you like, I'm going to try to hit this guy. <laughs> I'm going to walk up and try to punch the guy that's, that's making everybody in this room laugh. And then he Man. got knocked out and woke up to this nigga still performing. He, he kept killing it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. We woke up like, yeah, this, this dude's pretty funny. Where am I? That's wild. He woke and up. And was like, for that oh. ticket, too. So you paid to get knocked out. That's it's, the word. Yeah. He, he woke up. He thought he was in heaven. He said Richard Pryor done got darker. <laughs> he, missed, he missed the... The one thing I was like, damn, did he miss the setup of the next joke? What if he woke up to DC killing and was just like, ah, oh, I missed it. <laughs> I missed the setup. <laughs> Man, he was knocked out. They walked him out the club. He was still partly knocked out when they were walking him out the club. I, that's so, that's wild as hell. 
That's, he had a Michael Jackson concert experience. Like you just up there and next thing you know, you're in the back. You're like, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Missed it. Mm-mm. It was so unnecessary too, like super unnecessary, bro. I want an inter- I want like an interview series of all the people who passed out at Michael Jackson concerts because it's like <laughs> that would be crazy. Be like, yo, I waited for six hours <laughs> to get that close, and I saw seven seconds of the performance. <laughs> that's wow, that's dog because they were passing out before he even said a word. Mister, he was the whole just coming time. out of the ground, fireworks. And they're like, I'm I'm out. <laughs> If you you should know how big of a fan you are before you before you like purchase tickets. You should have some t- like I I like this artist so much. I'll buy these tickets, but if he takes his glasses off, I'm gone. Like you have to, you have to know like at some point like you're wasting your money like as as long as he don't look my direction. <laughs> but if he takes his glasses off, I'm gone. <laughs> as long as he don't take his shades off, I'll be okay. Do y'all have your own faintable artists? I don't even know what happens in their mind for that. Because at the most, I'm like, oh, this is dope. I'm about to see a song. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I've never ever thought there was anyone that was that exciting to meet or that talented to where I think I would pass out. How do you, I don't, yeah, I guess I never understood the concept of how do you pass out when you see someone that you're, yeah, what happens? Like, do you Are just you like hold your breath? Are like, you... uh, well, no, it seems like it, it, seems like it all happens at once. They had to reboot. <laughs> like, why? Why do you just pass out when you? Well, see I mean, something? I think it's just fainting. Like, yeah, I've never seen somebody faint, but I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it just like the, you just power off. But I thought that was because like, oh, he's playing Billie Jean, or like, oh, this is my favorite song. Not just he's here. You knew that it's a concert. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, did, he did not surprise you. What was he? he was crying too much. He was jumping too much. What? What? Your heart gave out. I don't understand what makes you just. Like, <gasps> I, just I don't get it. The older I got, I thought that that was like label propaganda to make him sound bigger. Like, yo, they be passing out at his show. Oh, you mean like the label like, planted people? That'd be genius. Ooh, what if it really yeah. was, though? That makes more sense, actually. I would do that. I haven't seen nobody faint like that. Since Michael Jackson, I didn't see that at right? no one else's concert ever. It so just it doesn't like make good sense. Better. The most and recent I feel like time Beyonce I saw has like fans that. that would faint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Exhaustion. It's not from like, oh, this person. It's you were there. You've been standing there for hours. You've been singing, dancing, move. You know that part I get, but just seeing. Well, maybe celebrity was just different back then because you only like. That yeah. those people fainting, no couldn't, they couldn't follow Michael Jackson on Twitter that whole day. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like oh, yeah, people, people at their no, favorite was... concerts are like, "Oh, I've been following this dude. I've been hanging out with this dude all day. Like, of course he's here. Like, it's almost like, yo, what up, so and so.' Like, fans feel like they know and are cool with the 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 people. When back then, it was like that was probably the first time you ever saw Michael Jackson in person. The only times I've seen people pass out like that was Michael Jackson and Benny Hinn. And who? Benny Hinn. But that? Benny Hinn is making you fall. He's blowing it. So, yeah, that's what they, he was like. He was one of those uh, uh, middle of the night preachers back in the day. He was the first oh, with person the jacket? That was hitting people yeah. up. Yeah, and he was doing that. And everybody was falling out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. Yo, I had it. Y'all, I went to this church and there was this preacher. God rest his soul. He did that to me and I didn't fall. I was just like, oh. Did he give you a look like, hey, yeah, he's doing my thing. What do you think? That almost like, hey, bitch. What's wrong with you? I hit you with the jacket. <laughs> he did, hey. he did, no, he said something like, ah, oh, the Lord is working on her. The Lord. And I'm sitting there like, ah, uh, he is, but I don't, okay. So then I, felt, I felt weird, so I felt bad. So the next time he did it, again, I just went ahead and laid down. I was like, Ugh. Why you didn't fall the first time, man? Cause I was like, why did I need to fall? I didn't. I, I first of all, I did not ask to be there. <laughs> even in even in the spirit of the Holy Ghost, you still had time to ask questions. Why should I fall? <laughs> Give me six reasons why I should fall right now. And if I like, all six I was things. in there worshiping the Lord with everybody else. Did, I did not ask Him to put His head on me. I did not need no healing. I didn't ask for that. I was just there, just, you know, worshiping the Lord. So we put His hands on me. And I was supposed to fall back. I was like, He would have hit you with a, a kick sweep if you didn't do it the second time. 
Hey, to put his back foot behind your back foot. Okay, I just laid back. I was like, okay. I passed the sweet foot switching people. Like a pass that was hilarious. In the name of the Lord. Sweet. <laughs> that was a movement. You know, people don't fall in church no more. They don't. They don't? Is awesome. that is that not a thing anymore? That was a thing of the past. They do. No, they still do sometimes. Old people. You gotta go. You got. You ain't been to the South, Lance. They still be passing. I'm always in the South, baby. No, you not. Kevin, get off your phone. Stop trying to get wholesale chitlins. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, what are you doing today, man? What's going on? <laughs> I legitimately was doing. Something. You were like that's it, legitimately what you was doing. Wholesale chitlin prices. Going I, to I have <laughs> a standard that. issue. I was talking to my wife joke, but it's not even as funny as buying chickens wholesale. wholesale. <laughs> and I really so was like talking to my wife, but. Buying chitlins wholesale is way funnier than my dropping it off with a forklift. Kev's like, all right, back it up. <laughs> beep, beep. I don't even like chitlins, but that joke is still funny. Have y'all ever had chitlins? I remember. Yes, I used to work at my my godparents' oh, um uh, barbecue hell. joint. I had to clean them things. Thank oh no, nah. I never, I, I never cannot, had chitlins. I, I love myself. I cannot. Yeah. Uh, I taste them just because I like to do things once, but I can't. Eat food that I don't. The smell is so. It's hot, hard to get past. It yeah. is. I don't and know. Like, Chitlins have a weird texture, so that's like, two out of three things I don't like. And you know what I didn't like? My auntie always got the ones that came in those plastic bins that looked like it was for paint. Yeah, you know, those clear that's plastic it. tubs that ice cream came in. And I just the I didn't the, like uh, the, ne the Neapolitan ice cream. Yeah, yeah. It, it, you it, got it, Napoleon. You got soak them. And like vinegar, and then you clean, you rip the uh, the lining of the inside of it out. You gotta clean it, it out. To me, it tastes it's like cool. dirty socks in the attic. I was like, I can't do stuff this. inside of those intestines, so you have to clean them out. You have to squeeze them and clean them out before you can cook. That's just that's a lot. <clears throat> but I would tell you, on, hey, it, did y'all watch High on the Hog? Oh no, yes, that's great. It's a great. Man, show. you should watch it. It talks about uh, African American culture and how it shaped America, and it was talking about how they're. You know, a lot of times black people are trying to distance themselves from soul food because, um, you know, it's not usually healthy. But it was talking about how we ate chitlins because we got all the leftover stuff when we try to make yep. good out of what was left. And I respect all that, mm -hmm. but it's not a requirement anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass. Yeah. <laughs> it means you high on the hog as in like eating pork? Getting high, yeah, getting high off pork. Like, yeah. Okay. Right. Look at you that, check it out, Pat. It's super dope, bro. It's it's four Netflix? episodes on Netflix. Yeah, it's called High on the Hot. Okay. If you don't have time to watch it all, just watch the first episode. You might you might feel an emotion or two. Mm -hmm. Okay, Kevin was like crying while he was watching me. He posted it all on internet. I was not crying. I almost did. Watching it because you was food. like, who over here eating my family? High on the hog. <laughs> oh, what is happening? <laughs> 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 Oh, you know, she talked family. about shut up, Megan. Just <laughs> shut up today. Enough out of you. Just talk about other people. There's other people on this thing. <laughs> I did but talk it was about talking other about how uh you know people confuse yams and sweet potatoes or say they're the same thing. Yeah. So she actually showed a yam and it it is not a sweet potato. Huge. It looks it is humongous. Like a and wild it looks like yam? an elephant. Yeah, it looks like an elephant's like foot. Long. Like you would it's never like confuse the two. They are so different. Yeah. Oh wow. What happened was black people or African American people when they were enslaved, they didn't have yams. And the closest thing to a yam was a sweet potato. Oh. So it had similar texture, similar flavor, or not similar, but close enough. And they because just called sweet potatoes Africa? yams. And that's where yeah, that so came from. When you in so for Thanksgiving, when you're like, oh, I'm eating candied yams, no, you're eating candied sweet potatoes. Yeah. So, but the yam is actually a different vegetable that does grow uh, in countries in Africa. I think they were in Benin when they were when she was talking about that. It was super interesting. Huh. Yeah. Talking about how so, a slave introduced uh, macaroni and cheese. George Washington's chef and Thomas Jefferson's chefs were the first celebrity chefs, both black men and slave. Hercules was one name, and I don't remember the other guy's name. So but Thomas chef? Jefferson's slave chef he he trained in France, and he's the one who came up with macaroni and cheese. It's super dope, bro. What? Yeah, oh, it's yeah. wow. Yeah. So, so much so of American culture. All the times we say we've had yams, all the huh? times we've had yams are really those are really sweet potatoes. 
really yeah. sweet potatoes most of the time, almost all the time. Because mm. I don't remember ever seeing a yam in the in the grocery store, not the way the one she looked like. Man, I'm looking at them right now, and they're they're not that orange yeah. co- color. So nope. no, they're not orange. They're um, more like starchy. Guessing everything. Or, yeah, they're like a uh, like a potato e color. So, so it was a lot about like um like um African American people, like how they invented certain foods and meals and dishes and those type of things. A lot of it was that I, made do is a lot of it. Like here's this came from this came from this came from either Africa or came from okay slavery. This is how it came from. You know what? Like yeah. when I watched it, it made me feel so like empowered because it's like it's another reminder that Black people are so creative and will turn nothing into something. Like, yeah, but you're Asian, so go watch. You know, yeah. zero drinks of sushi or something. <laughs> Man, just take it out, Kenan. I, I want to get Meg back, but I don't have anything strong. You're not married, and you want to be. <laughs> How do you know I'm not married, Kevin? How do you know? Your dog on house. I was so, so jealous of your house. When I saw you, like, doing the remodel, I was like, this girl done really got seven bedrooms, 8,000 square feet, all the dog on backyard. I was like, what's the point of being married if she got all this stuff? <laughs> it is big and your it. baby ain't even gonna remember living nowhere but that house i did say that i was like i that's the one thing i'm proud of he he comes you know when i think about the lineage that he comes from he has two immigrant grandmothers one of his grandmothers mm. used to clean houses and now this baby is growing up in a house like this his daddy yeah, got that's Ferrari, dope, bro. Like, i'm like this is your legacy yo like you come from nothing and you are something like that that it makes me really proud. i hear the echoes too in your i i, I hear them nice mm-hmm. little nice little bounce <laughs> and your internet been strong since you moved over there i this told you true. this is a white neighborhood white people don't play with they they internet when i was in a black neighborhood they was like whatever infrastructure but here <laughs> That was really the white people playing with the black people's internet, though. <laughs> They're like, we will keep all the stuff to ourselves. Y'all, you make do. <laughs> no, nah, we need the internet so that they can steal. <laughs> <laughs> they gotta go to the. They gotta come to us to steal if uh, without the internet. Let's put it to a vote. How did uh, how they steal before the internet? Like, how was Elvis getting? Were they just sending people to like watch black? Bro, the uh, thing about it, yes. Back then, it was just like what you finna do. I'm white. Yep. I heard the song on the radio. How did the coffee happen? Did they stand in the back of the club? Just like you know the you know Betty Boop is actually black. Like if you yeah, I heard that. Well, so what happened was there was was this this uh, she was like a, a singer. I forgot her name, but she was a singer like Cotton Club era, 1920s. And she right. would always do the little baby voice when she sang, boop doop boop She would do boop, stuff like that. And then it was a whole, a white singer that saw that, came to the club trying to get entertained and stole it and took it and started like touring with it and was like saying that, that she invented the whole <laughs> baby boo boo boo. And then um, no was sued. Was su- She sued somebody who was trying to copy her and they was like, no, no, that's actually not yours. That was the black lady before you. Mm. There was really nothing. <laughs> back then. Nothing you could do, bro. Yeah, white people used to steal a lot. I mean, they still do. But they used to too. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put it to a vote: dressing with gravy versus dressing with cranberry sauce. Did we even talk dressing about that with at all? Gravy. No. <laughs> we're closing in on Thanksgiving too, baby. We only got about five more months, and then it's go time. Dressing with gravy. Who who eats cranberry sauce? Me, and I make I cranberry sauce, and I put my dressing with cranberry sauce every time. Pat, what you going but, with? You but they said you was with. Asian, so that don't count. I'm half Asian. Pat, Yo, Meg with. can Meg her cooking all black. Lex. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she draws from all the souls of her ancestors. Yes. Meg can cook for real, and she can bake. Pass Thank you the top break. Nice, Kevin. I say all what? the fat jokes, I take them back. All the swine jokes, I take them back. No, you don't. What? What? Just, what just, um, just take a compliment, huh? I'm cramping. I, I don't. I don't know the right way to ask you. What? What? Um, what kind of Asian? Oh, uh, Korean. My mom is Korean. Korean. Okay. 
Korean and black. My dad was in the military. Same story as every other black. (laughs) (laughs) Always dad in the military, huh? It's always, I want to meet a black and Asian Korean person where the dad is Korean and he pulled a black woman. And he wasn't. So in that's, the that's like it, you got to go to like um like San Jose or like Northern California. That happens a lot in Northern California. Really? Yes. I'm in Northern. I'm in Northern California. It does, don't it? No, it doesn't. No, it does. I'm telling you, if you, I'm telling you, a lot of Blasians that are from like Cali, if their family wasn't in the military, you'll see that that happens more than it doesn't. Meg I actually is one do of my know one. Ten or fifteen Blasian homegirls or homeboys, they all. Dad was in the military, met his, met their mom when they were either stationed there or Korean War or something like that. That's how it all started that's for all the people I know. Have you guys ever seen a Hispanic person and an Asian person date? Yeah, my homegirl. If you're in the military, that's like she's Puerto Rican and Korean. I think uh, Bart and Gio, Gio's <laughs> Mexican and Bart is Asian. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've ever seen a Hispanic and Asian couple. It happens. Like Asian dude, Latina woman? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's just kidding yeah. news. Bart oh, yeah, is yeah. Asian and Gio is uh, Mexican. Oh, that is true, yeah. yeah. I'm going with uh, gravy. Ah, that's you dirty bastard. Mm-hmm. Anyway, we're All gonna right. move on to this last and final and the finale of <laughs> last round <laughs> topic right after this. Be real. How many subscription services are you paying for each month? Do you know? Subscriptions, they add up. And sometimes we don't even notice those monthly deductions to our bank account. Did you sign up for a bunch of subscription services during the quarantine? But now that you're heading back into the real world, you and your family no longer need all those apps and those streaming services. 80% of people have subscriptions that they forgot about. Are you one of them? What are you doing to save money and to take control of your finances? How do you keep track of your bill payments and budgets? Clunky Excel spreadsheet, scattered post-it notes, Truebill is the smartest way to manage your finances. It's an easy to use app. You can review your recurring charges all in one place. You can cancel subscriptions directly through the app. It has a variety of tools to help customers improve their finances. You can create a monthly budget and expenses, track and evaluate your saving goals, automated savings. That's right, you get to choose how much you want to put away. You can also get push notifications just in case you're about to go over your budget or your cash is running low. Now that's clutch. You can easily identify fraudulent activities. They offer multiple ways to save on your bills. You can even work with some of the top providers to negotiate and lower your bills, such as T-Mobile, AT&T, Spectrum, just to name a few. They also have bank-level security, so you'll feel good and secure about your finances. Some people think they spend around $80 a month on subscriptions, but in reality, they spend around closer to $200 a month. Truebill has saved its customers over $50 million and they have over 1 million users. If you want to read any reviews, just go to truebill.com. The average person saves $720 a year with using Truebill. Get started today at truebill.com slash squad. Take control of your finances and start saving at truebill.com slash squad. That's truebill.com, T-R-U-E-B-I-L-L.com slash squad, S-Q-U-A-D-D. You can only wear one forever. Which one is it? Jordans versus Yeezys. Yeezys. Wait, question. Wait, wait, wait. I have a question. So I've never owned a pair of Yeezys, but I've heard they're comfortable. They're the best. They're oh man, I like them so much. But then, like, black people stopped liking Kanye, and I was like, oh yeah, man, Kanye's <laughs> the worst. But I really wanted Yeezys, and then the first opportunity I got to get some free ones, I wore them every day. He still wears them. Pat loves those mm-hmm. black Yeezys. Yeah, I love. I want more. I, try, <laughs> I keep trying to get. There Yeezys. is no Jordan that is comfortable as the Yeezys. No, not one. Or cool looking. But I got so many wise, pair of Yeezys. There are more dope jo- Jordans than there are Yeezys. Absolutely. I waited my whole life to get my one pair of Jordans, the Retro Thirteens, and I finally got them, and they are so uncomfortable. What are the Thirteens? They look like couch. They look like a couch cushion. You know the little. They were the. Uh, the black and red. The black they, they, they the black just came red, with the uh, burgundy and gray ones. They just re-released those. Those so are 13. I was oh, like, wow, they do look like couch. Like that's a great, that is a great. Man, I got a couple pair of fours. Those are so, those are, are awful. The worst. Awful to wear on your feet. Well, cha- cha- change your insoles and toughen up. 
You want to look good or you want to be comfortable? Oh, my feet hurt. Stuck it up. That nigga said, if Dr. Wait, King were talking about his feet hurting, we still be. Wait, was Jordan if actually Dr. playing King ball? Was talking about his feet hurting. Was Jordan? Yeah, yeah. He Jordan was, was who? Jordan, the one Jordan was scoring fifty. Oh my gosh! I so, like well, no, what? The ones are Jordan. comfortable but terrible to play basketball in. Yeah, yeah he, Michael Jordan scored fifty-five points in those, and you can't do a forty-five-minute set without you talking about your feet hurt. He he actually I'm wore Jordans when he played. Yeah, yeah. Like all of them, like all, all, all. Uh, up up until he retired. Wow. That's why people stop wearing Jordans after a certain number. We like that nigga ain't hooping those. <laughs> yeah, wow. they got kind of got. Whoop. He, after the 13, 13, did people really 13, rock with him like that? Uh, the last, well, I remember in high school, like still, but as far as going back now, I would say. 14 is probably the last pair you'll see people wearing. I feel like, y'all, he had a special pair of Jordans that were not like the ones that were released. Insoles. There's no way because the Insoles. 13s are so heavy. Insoles. If you like, if you ever watch, if you ever watch basketball now, like if you notice, like when, when players give their shoes to fans, you ever see that? Yeah. You'll notice they always take out their insoles. For real? Yeah, they take the insoles out and get a. You can take. I thought, it was, I thought it was for like cleanliness purposes. Like, oh, I don't want to give you my athlete's feet and get sued. So let me take the insoles out. Nah, they them insoles is everything. Oh, Megan, I'm looking at the of the Jordan. So just keep your jokes to yourself. <laughs> he about to hit you with another one. <laughs> I can't. I don't. I don't. I like the Yeezys when they first came out, but. Honestly, him saying that goofy shit did make me never want to own a pair. Wh- which goofy shit did he say? Uh, well, the goofy that you referring to that got me off on was the uh, slavery was a choice. I mean, he was already doing goofy shit, but when he said that goofy shit, I was just like, nah, nigga. You know, and everybody tried to clean it up. He didn't mean it like that. He was saying that if all of y'all there, y'all chose to be captured, then that was a choice, nigga. They got guns. <laughs> right. You know what's crazy? They got dogs that shoot bullets out of their mouth, so they might as well be guns. Like, what? no, bro. There, there's like a um. I have a whole Kanye theory that I won't get into now. Um, but at the moment when he said things, I was like furious with everybody else, and then when I started to listen and look at what he's saying, I was like, oh, this niggas kind of making some sense. He did make some sense sometimes, but I do think he was off his meds. I muted me. I muted Lance so we can have an intelligent conversation, guys. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and another thing. <laughs> you think, wait, y'all think he, that Kanye's going to be different now that he's no longer a Kardashian? Did they get divorced officially? Yeah. Yeah, they they going through it. Yeah, this it's the problem. I'll tell you, tell you Kanye's issue. Kanye came into rap music in the entertainment business conscious. He came in the game with guys like Talib Kweli and Dave Chappelle. So, and his his parents are educators. He has a consciousness to him. He made songs like Jesus Walks and Spaceship. This is this is who he is at his core. He came in the game and he was chasing fame at a high level. So we started to intermingle in circles that were not comfortable to his spirit. Mm. So he was battling this thing with his spirit and his soul the whole time. And I think that's why he would lash out and say a lot of things because he was like trying to say real shit, but he was caught up in this world that's not him. Everybody's not comfortable playing in the devil's playground. You, some people still have something in them to let them know like, yo, this is not right. I should not be in here. But all of this money is great. <laughs> and money is great. And to hear is in Whole Foods, something says, this is not right. I shouldn't be in here. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you do that to him? <laughs> because you've not been doing it to me and I don't really got here. nothing solid stuff on you. So You also don't have any solid stuff on your body either. <laughs> <laughs> that was a flabby joke. I get it. <laughs> 
I, I don't want to do this show anymore. Is that is it is it okay to say that? <laughs> Tell your servants to shut it off then. <laughs> shut it off, servants. I'm done. <laughs> oh no, they're oh. probably listening. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Out of servantry. Yeah, we know y'all aren't servants. Everybody here is gamefully employed. They are. Gamefully? As, as our I servants. said hush. Why are you looking at me? <laughs> and there's two niggas under the table tying his shoes right now. <laughs> they have to keep doing it until he says enough. <laughs> Untie them and tie them again. <laughs> yeah. I think um, I feel like the Campbell stage more, the generous. I feel like Jordans are more ingrained in our culture than Yeezys are. I mean, the new generations really rock with the Yeezys. I don't, I don't really like a lot of the new designs that have come out. The first Yeezys, man, that came I saw out, somebody with the my bag of tear. The first Yeezys that came out with Nike, I wanted all of those, and then the the black joints that Kev and the ones that you have, Pat, I did want those. But those were the only pair that I wanted from the second collaboration he did with uh, Adidas. I, I didn't want any other pair though. Where do y'all get Yeezys from? I've been new... trying to get them and I cannot find them. You got to get on the internet. That's where I be. Go. Stack X, Go. Go. Huh? Goat is the easiest place. Where? The Goat app. Goat. I got to get on the app to get these. I'm about to just go to the slots and swap me and get those Yeezys. Fake ones? Yeah, y'all yeah. don't know the difference. Hey, who cares about it. fake food, uh, fake shoes at this point? I feel like, wh why? Well, I don't, I don't get it. It's called a wise I, investment. Pat. That was a huge thing for me when I was a kid, but now it's just like, oh, these are CZs. Give them to me. Yeah, <laughs> I got these. Thing. I got these. The just so shoes <laughs> from Amazon. They're like a lot of people have them, and I was mad because I thought I was onto something. And they're what are they? so, they're called just so so or just so. Look them up on Amazon. They have like a million there, different colors. There's just so so shoes. <laughs> <laughs> but I, yo, I keep seeing them the same place. and they're so comfortable. I got two pair. I got a yellow pair and I got a salmon pair. And they're so, yo, you would love them, Pat, because you don't like wearing socks with your shoes. And these shoes are so comfortable, you could do that. I wouldn't recommend you it. Said, you said they so so deaf. You got some Jermaine Dupree's. They just so so. Okay, they just. So. What happened to those Nikes that you could step into? You so, you remember those ones that were like laceless and they like bent and you stepped into them and they were for people who had. I, I thought it was like a prototype. That wasn't really real. Was it wasn't it? real. Oh, I was waiting for those. No, no, they they came out. <laughs> they got they got bought up fast. I saw a video about how all the scam not scammers but all the bots bought them up, and then this guy who was in mobile or had. Uh, mobile, immobile capabilities. He made a video about how those shoes were made for his community. Right. But then all these bots bought them up and raised the price, and now they can't afford them. So that's the crazy. I saw that too. Intended, but the specific community to make uh, their right. life easier has been bought up by people, and they can't afford it now. Bots. I was wondering if we were, you guys don't let shit go. <laughs> we're the worst. That's another episode of Sparkcast. We're not even going to No, we got to say which ones we want. You we don't go ahead and talk to y'all next week, man. We want to thank Larry. Shut up, here. Shut your fat, toothless mouth. We didn't finish yet. <laughs> Shut your, put your dentures away and let us finish the episode correctly. <laughs> Bottom up was hilarious. Jordans for me. It's more, more, sh more shoes are dope. Uh, less controversy as a person, and I actually watch Jordan play. There's a certain connection, and there's a nostalgia for me. There's no nostalgia with Yeezys. I remember when I was in middle school and people got the new Jays, and I was like, "Dang, those are fire!" The Space Jams, especially. Ah, I just got a so, pair yeah. of Space Jams. Yes. I remember that same feeling. I was like, I ain't going to be poor one day. I'm going to have those <laughs> shoes. One of these days. You know, I had a pair of Jordan 1s when I was in like sixth grade and I got teased for them. What? Because shoes, like ret retroing shoes wasn't cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Back then. So they were just old. But then I just had oh, an old pair of shoes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just had some. We went to my mom's 
they ain't even take me with them. My mom and dad went to the to the outlet store and they had them for like 30 bucks. Nice. That's crazy. The, That's the, like the, champion. The Chicago. When I was coming up, champion was not dope. It was Yo, not really? tight. It was poor. And if you had that, you were poor. And now the doggone champion stuff is 50 bucks. Let me go. Who got a pair of Starberries? I didn't, I'm gonna go rock those. <laughs> I used to wear those. You had hey, some Starberries? Anybody have Spreewells with the $8 dollar Starberries from uh, Stephen $8? Berry, just to see the shoestrings lasted two tie-ups and they busted open. Hey, bro. Did you say you got them from Mr. Perry's? Stephen Berry's. Oh, man, I remember seeing oh, that. Everything in Berry's. the world was $8 or less. Yeah. The laces broke? Which one the was that? Broke on Starberry. I didn't need to, I just wanted to see if, if you could hoop in them and you you can't. And you couldn't. Easy. I remember no, the uh, Payless had the Akeem Olajuwon's, the Spaldings. There you, oh, that's what it was, the Spaldings. My mom tried to get me to like, wear those. Mm, these are cool, but I'm not going to get I had, I had a pair of Hakeem's. <laughs> My cousin had. I was like, All the girls were dream shaking away from me and them. <laughs> <laughs> no, one, no one had the spree wells with the you wood grain? Nah, we was nah, wood grains. The, I didn't have those. If you, if you uh, had the th if you had the spree wheels, you might as well have got those three ten motorsports. Remember the three <laughs> ten? The games. The wood grain on it, nigga. They was really trying to sell shoes with wood grain on it, like fam. Wow, I said, that. nigga, I'm not gonna lace up these PT cruisers. <laughs> <laughs> they did look like PT cruisers, though. Where are uh, the PT cruisers? That's what it's all. Oh, I'm going Jordans. Uh, Kev, you going Jordans? What you going, Pat? Yeezys. Man. I'm gonna say Jordans because I because the nostalgia. No one's been shot over Yeezys though. That you know of. No. <laughs> Lance, Lance, what you I got I gotta go with Jordans, but man, and first because it's the same thing. It's so many pairs. They got so many colorways. We're going from one to fourteen with a hundred different colors. So I gotta go with that. But what what Yeezys and the Kanye's did for the shoe culture is very impressive. That that's even a conversation I mean, is amazing. Off of it. Yeah, that is true. Well, it looks like the Jordans have it on that one, man. Uh, like I said, we want to thank our special guest, Lance Woods, for pulling up today, man. Thank y'all for watching another episode of Squadcast. Shout out to the original squad, man. We got Kevin on stage, Pat, and man, scooping myself to hear more. Thank you guys so much again for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you next week on another episode of Squadcast Versus. Peace. Just to get everybody throwing this up. Is that something?